harder hit than us. And even after watching it impact New Hampshire, Congresswoman Ann Custer still supports it. Call Ann Custer. Tell her Obamacare isn't working for New Hampshire. Three, two, one. Welcome to another edition of Grok Talk, brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your fear, extremist, right-wing, hard-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you can only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. We'd like to welcome... Ann Custer to the program today. If you're looking on the live stream, there she is. She's been on a diet. She's been on a diet. She's lost so much weight, we can't even see her. She hasn't been seen for a while. No, that's true. She's you, missing in action. You, so, put up, you put up a post about that. I did. A uh, couple, actually, recently. But anyway, uh, Kevin Kervig will be joining us later today. SNHU professor, general libertarian, conservatarian guy. Um, Susan Olson's here. She rolled out of bed and strolled in to spend some time with us. We've got her visiting. Uh, and later on in the show, Brian Demjanovich, who is a Jen Horn's pool guy. And uh, he'll be coming in to talk to us about uh, some interesting things that you might want to hear anyway. Uh, before that, though, there's plenty to talk about. Skip Murphy, of course, is here. Mike is expected, but maybe he got stuck on his way out of Scotland. I don't know. He could be... Uh, maybe he had some haggis. Oh, wait. He's not feeling well. Wait, wait, wait. Guess what? Guess what? 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 We've got Annie. Oh, oh. <laughs> I can't hear it through the feed, though. Hopefully it's on the stream, all right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so there you go, live streamers. That will not be on the podcast, so you'll be going, why is it quiet? We were listening to something in the studio that was being streamed, okay? Just, you know, you should listen to the live stream and then the podcast. You miss everything. You don't miss anything. Anyway, hopefully you won't miss anything. Um, plenty of things always going on around here. Uh, reminder, of course, that uh, you should go to granitegrock.com and check out all this fun stuff because that's where you're going to see it. And, uh, of course, cnht.org. Very nice of them to allow us to use the space. And don't forget to get the app. Yes, iHeart, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, and then you can visit us at YouTube, of course, as always, and Ustream if you're watching the live stream, but you can see past episodes of our program and on YouTube And Brook TV well. on some really old stuff, too. Yeah, so if you want to go see the lost episodes, go to Brook <laughs> TV. Anyway, so uh, we had a pre-show. If you didn't see the pre-show, you lost out, but Skip will post it later, so you can be able to check it out. Yep. And uh, anyway. Oh, gonna... which reminds me, I could turn the other camera on. Oh, oh, okay. You That's go do fine. that. Thank well, you. Know, I will do that. Talking Yay. about uh, Ann Custer running away from her extreme agenda. Yes. Um, you know, one thing she did do, there was an advertisement out, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, where she's talking uh, with a fellow who apparently is a micro brewer of beer, which might make people happy in Scotland. Um, or other places. Scotland, I thought was whiskey. Oh, they have beer there. Scottish. Ale. They may have. They may have. Yeah. Where, where do they make Guinness? Is that Guinness? Is that uh, British? Is that English or might be Irish. Welsh? I, I don't know. Irish. Know. Is, is it, it Irish? Ireland. Yeah. Guinness. Brilliant. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's still good stuff. So. Yeah. Nevertheless, she. she Annie, have... do you know? Please, Annie. Anything? No, I guess not. Yeah. She thinks it's in Libya. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know uh, what? We probably should put the headphones on. Maybe, maybe that's, that's the issue. Right, okay. Just All right. Let's try it again. Sorry. All right. Annie? No. No. Nothing to say. No. Okay. Apparently. But uh, she was, uh, um, she's fighting to reduce the federal tax on beer. Okay. You, you notice how when she first ran, she was such an uber progressive. You know, she was in that primary where everybody in there was trying to say, I'm more progressive than you. I swear she sounds more Republican than some of the Republicans right now. Yeah, but that's a very low bar, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. 
actually. Yeah. So I'm thinking. All right, Let's so see. she would. David Booten. Yeah, bar. Lowering the beer bar. tax. No, they, no. David Booten just stops at the bar. That's true. That's true. He hasn't. He hasn't. So you. It yet. He, he hasn't passed the bar then. He has not passed the bar. <laughs> <laughs> So she's reduced the she's she's fighting to reduce the federal tax on beer to help uh, brewers and wouldn't it wouldn't it make sorry Eddie that's uh, Ann Custer's it, our guest this morning yeah uh, makeup we need to get that hair thing done um, so no 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 she I was they're gonna come in and do that in the fluffing yeah so rather than um, working to reduce the gas tax which would allow more people to travel to go get beer. She's going to reduce the tax on beer, so more make, people can get drunk. Uh, I, I guess, I guess, but then that puts them into health care and the state thing. So I, I don't know how this all works. Bread, bread and circuses. Bread and circus. Beer and circus. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That's what she's talking. About. It is a circus, quite frankly. So haggis. We were having a discussion. Ah uh, yes, and uh, sorry. And in uh, in Scotland, the haggis have short legs on one side and long long legs on the other. So they do because of the yeah. because of steep mountains. Yeah, it truly uh, it is. <laughs> it is. No, the haggis, of course, is not a creature, but a strange form of sausage, which may as well be a creature. Sausage. Well, when you put so the word "strange" in front of it, I'm not so sure I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> the question is: Is what do they drink in Scotland if not whiskey? Where is Guinness made? Guinness is made in Ireland. That's there you go. Bingo. Bingo. We, it's not Libya. Bells? It's not Libya. She Anna. thought it was Libya. That's what Skip said. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> hey, welcome back. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good to have you back. Yeah. Yes. Well, Scotland was a good trip, and uh, no, Guinness is not made there. The Glaswegians are famous for getting drunk, as, as well as making boats, which they don't do so much of these days. Because they don't need to get drunk. They don't need a boat. To get drunk, right? no, <laughs> no, they no, they don't. And uh, you'll you'll notice that um, the Scottish National Party and the uh, the hangers-on that wanted to separate Scotland from England were concentrated in the uh, inner cities and uh, immediate suburbs of Glasgow and Dundee, and they would be the locations of the large numbers of government dependents. There you go. It would be like. Um, Oh, I don't know. The uh, most dependent areas of downtown New York, for example, or the uh, the worst areas of Washington, D.C., not the ones uh, paid by government, voting to separate themselves from the Federal Reserve. <laughs> uh, by the way... Good analogy. Thanks. Scotland's vote. Yes. Update us, please. It was uh, about 55-45 in the end. And partly secured by the fact that every politician out of England uh, made promises of further devolution of power and taxing authorities to the point where you get English uprisings saying uh, no taxation without representation. Because the, the dirty little secret is this. The Scottish and to some extent the Welsh regional assemblies have some local lawmaking and taxing authority. But... Their representatives still go to Westminster and vote on laws that affect England, who do not have their own separate regional assembly. You see what I mean? <laughs> if you're going to regionalize it, you have a federal government in, Red in Westminster and regional assemblies in Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and England. You don't have that. So what you're doing is devolving power to the guys that are making the most noise uh, without uh, preventing them from voting on the, on the greater whole. Sort of double voting. Uh, kind of, yes. Voter fraud, legal. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not sure, and I'm not sure the ballots were stuffed in this case. Uh, the haggis was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not haggis unless Think, it's stuffed. Speaking of ballots and stuffing, <laughs> did you guys see that excellent Henry Payne cartoon this week? Because uh, you've got the dem democracy protests in Hong Kong, of course, because oh, oh, Hong man. Kong for many years has, in, has uh, enjoyed a light regulatory hand under the British and the British governorship, which basically uh, had a low flat tax, very low regulations, a very light hand and a locally elected assembly. And now the Beijing government is saying uh, your candidates have to be approved by us. It's kind of like the GOP in America, actually. Yes. <laughs> or, or, the, or New Hampshire. And, and so there's this fat cat sitting at the, the reserved for the Communist Party table saying, uh, chopped democracy. 
uh, stuffed oh, yeah. Yeah, ballot uh, and fried opposition. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like that's exactly how the GOP treats uh, its grassroots. Wow. <laughs> no, I have not seen it, but you're going to have to put it up for no, us. I, no, I posted it. And I posted an when? amended. Uh, he did, yeah, couple, this week, a couple of days ago. Oh gosh, and, and it's I, been uh, one of those weeks. I, I put guess. up the Henry Payne original, and I put up a slightly. Oh yes, yes, And yes, I put the slightly yes. modified yes. Uh, one underneath it. All right, yes. I'll have yes. to find I, it. We'll I put it up that. on Sorry. the. <laughs> uh, I, I was actually uh, taking a swing at the Democrats, but we could just as easily be talking about our uh, um, overlords. Indeed. Overlords. Indeed. <laughs> so no, no jet lag. You're all. I mean, it's not that long a flight uh no it wasn't that bad and uh I, what, what's your what's your temperature here uh, i'm fine okay. oh when you connect, all you have to do is take ibuprofen ah there you go when you connect through um alter to fool the uh, the scanners and yes. uh yes. And, and sneak your revolver into the country yep yeah well i don't think too many icelandic uh, citizens travel to and from uh the stricken areas of africa and uh, and and furthermore there are no direct flights uh, so connecting from Scotland to Reykjavik to Boston, I kind of stayed out of the way of the main uh, Ebola superhighway through Brussels yeah, and no, Washington. It's the ah. Ebola superhighway. Yeah, I was it, talking it, about this before the break. I brought it up briefly, and I wanted to mention it because obviously we have the case in Dallas, and now there's like 100 people they have that they're watching, and, and there will be more, obviously, because it's Ebola, right? And, uh, you know, the, the, the Border Patrol said they've stopped hundreds of West Africans coming across the border from Mexico um, in the last year, and even more now. They're still coming. Um, so uh, somehow oh, or other, they're, they're, they're... They're just Nigerian programmers wanting to strike somehow, it rich quick by but, I mean, they're saying that there's email scam. A lot of... Yeah, email, email scam. A lot of people are getting through Mexico and coming up. Okay, so I'm like, all right, great, great. So I check to see, well, how come there's no stories about Ebola in Mexico? You'd think if that's where they're all going, somebody in Mexico, sooner or later, is going to come into contact with these people, unless they're purposefully not. You check the news, Mexican government, no, we don't have any Ebola. There's no news on Ebola in Mexico at all. So how is Ebola <laughs> traveling from West Africa through Mexico into the southern United States, hundreds of West Africans who've been in areas that are exposed. How's that working? How are they doing that? I'm sure. It's a rhetorical uh, question, but uh, you yes. know, your your cartoon is now up in the live stream. Okay, um, um, and by by the way, I I think that the ones coming in through Mexico are probably economic refugees. Uh, the ones we should worry about. Aren't they all? Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not saying that we should condone their free passage into the United States. I'm saying the more important point is: is there will be hundreds coming for medical care that can't get there when yes. they've been exposed, and that's the problem. You're yeah. right. That's and that's that's a very good point. And if you were a terrorist and you wanted to screw the United States up, you'd get a bunch of them together and go, "I'll pay for you to go get health care in the United States. Stick them in a container ship." Even though they've only been in areas that are exposed, obviously, because if they are in like week two or week three, they're not going to make it. <laughs> but well, if they're I, in week one, you could get them here in time. You you could, or you could put them on a charter flight to somewhere in northern Mexico and yep. uh, and have them make the rest of the trek. Sure but could. It, but it, it's interesting that we don't have, as yet, the disease spreading there. We have these nasty forms of TB and enterovirus mm -hmm. spreading. Everywhere Obama's dumped kids on us. There's always an EB68. Yeah, 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 which, which that's is the, the one. That's the enterovirus. That's yes. the one. I, that's the one I was referring to. Whereas at the moment, the places where Ebola seems to have struck in the United States are ones where aid workers, especially, or people that have snuck in, uh, have, have landed directly. So I, I'm wondering how many uh, accidental contacts they're going to find that pass through Dulles Airport, for example, uh, somewhere else that I avoid when I can. Well, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> or DFW when they depart and they go through. Well, yeah. They've already gone through customs by the time they get to DFW. Yeah. Well, Mr. Duncan, the ref the the uh, the healthcare rent seeker from Liberia, his express reason for coming, he knew he was sick. As you know, all these details are coming out. He came to the U.S. as it was his only chance to survive. Uh, now, f as far and that's been established at this point, because he knew he wasn't going to make it in Liberia with the everything's overloaded there. Now, what gets me is the, self, the, the, the selfishness of saying, 
I'm going to put me first. So he exposed all these people on the plane. He put everybody that he stayed with in risk. Everybody, everywhere he went, he put other people at risk. He knew that. He knew that he's got it, was willing to put them at risk. And then knowing that the U.S. citizenry were going to have to be on the hook to take care of him. But it's, it's, it, but it's worse than that. If he actually knew he was sick and he suspected it was Ebola, why did he allow himself to be discharged from the hospital the first time to go get even sicker and vomit over people? I, we that don't I know don't that know. story yet. Uh, we don't know why yet. I think they, they turned him throw, away. I think they, they, yeah. they didn't know that how sick he was. And then when he came back, they went, oh, crap. Now, you know, so how many people we're, he we're hearing? Up to 100 people have now been exposed. I bet you it's a lot more it's than that. It's got to be because every surface he touched, there's a potential, for, a potential for, for transmission if he left any material behind. Yeah, for Sweat several or hours. Drool yeah. Or vomit or anything. So, um, well, I can see why he came here. I mean, based on your description about the selfishness, we have a role model for him. He's called Barack Obama. We'll be right back. We are struggling. Rising health care costs are part of the problem. Senator Jean Shaheen helped create this mess we're in. As a state senator, her bill chased 21 insurers out of our state. It reduced our choices, raised prices for New Hampshire families, and when Jean Shaheen supported Obamacare, it limited access to 10 of our 26 hospitals, reducing our choices again. Tell Jean Shaheen she's made health care worse. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning. The Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused and interested, riveting radio show heard live every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 on 90.7 FM WLMW New Hampshire Family Radio and available 24-7 live or archived at GerardAtLarge.com. Be sure to tune in. All right, and uh, so Ann Custer, what do you, what's your opinion on this whole Ebola situation? That sounds about right. <laughs> Liberia. Li Liberia. Libya. 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 <laughs> the, the Ebola patients from Libya. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. All righty. Anyway, welcome back to Grok Talk. I'm Steve McDonald here with Skip Murphy, Mike Rogers, Susan Olson, Kevin Kervix joined us. He's going to be our guest for a while. And uh, hey, there you go. All this, uh, everybody's handing off things. Oh. <laughs> Hang on. Ebola, Ebola. I was kind of do that, but I didn't have time to find the music. So. We are back. We were talking about West Africans sneaking into the country. We've already covered Scotland, um, Haggis, Ann Custer, um, Brian Demjanovic, uh, and and uh, and and well, Ann Horn, Ann Horn. <laughs> Jen Horn's pool guy is going to be with us uh, in segment four. Oh, wonderful! Um, so we're going to talk about you know that sort of thing. Making a splash. Thing. Making a splash with uh, Brian, the pool guy. Crashing a splash. And uh, who knows? We're gonna. Well, we still got a couple minutes left in this segment. We could go anywhere. Well, let me uh, let me say that I think <clears throat> Barack Obama has all but without the words invited all these folks to come in. I mean, he's left the southern border open. He now made a speech that's saying we don't have to stop jet flights between the countries. We don't have to do anything that you know to secure our borders. We have such a magnificent. A hospital and health care system in this country. And you might Not kill a few a million problem. people and, and prevent an election. What the heck? Yeah, Come and on, in two man. weeks, that campaign promise has expired, and we've got probably now hundreds of people exposed to Ebola with a 70% death rate if you get it. I've, and uh, he's just playing golf. I I've come, you know, you remember the Borg, right, from Star Trek, and of course I've called them the Borg for a long time, number number of years, because that's what they are. So, I've given, um, I've given Mr. Mr. Uh, Security briefings his Borg designation four of ten, because that's what he is. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have a solution though. Oh, you do? Cool. Yeah. Someone came into my store last night, and uh, we we're talking about the uh, armed guards around this gentleman's house in. Uh, Texas, right? Mm -hmm. Because the family apparently was leaving, and now they have to keep the family from leaving their own house. So, his idea was, and I don't support this, but of course, this is an interesting idea that if Ebola were to make it to Washington, D.C., that perhaps uh, we could localize it there and isolate it there, 
and then all the Second Amendment folks could kind of cordon off Washington, come around the perimeter, maybe around the Beltway. Of <laughs> 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 course, uh, I don't subscribe to that idea, but I thought it was a creative uh, suggestion. Some people did suggest that, that all <laughs> Ebola patients should be sent to D.C. for treatment. That's what they suggested. Well, Clear I, that I, place I, out I thought they quick. had one there already. Didn't they have a suspected case in yeah. D.C. Well, only yeah, yesterday? No, it, yeah. uh, if you read Ace of Spades, they have a guy there who's a, a doctor. And he writes about this a lot, and he talks about it, you know, clinically speaking. And um, he, he says, you know, you're going to get all these false cases. Because anybody who gets flu symptoms and, and thinks maybe I just traveled, right. I was in a plane, maybe I was in, in Dallas, you know, they're going to go to the hospital, and the news has nothing else to talk about, so they're going to scare the crap out of people with Ebola. And, uh, you know, it, it pays to be cautious. And if you were near anybody who was in contact, yeah, you should pay attention. But... You know, you're going to see in Atlanta and in, in Utah and Cal. You know, all these places are going to say hey, Ebola, <laughs> Ebola, and um, and he says, you know, he says you just got to be careful not to let that propel you down this thing where you know, like after 9/11, people were duct taping their houses up with plastic and to keep the uh, keep the white powder out. So uh, there will be instances of that, I'm sure. Because America's full of all kinds of people, right. and a lot of them are low information voters, and not a lot to be done for it. So uh, Skip's going to get another mic out, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we got full house, and uh, we can't do without uh, Susan joining in because yes. uh, she's got lots to say to us. <laughs> and I was early anyway, so. He broke something. <laughs> the door was unlocked. I just wanted in. <laughs> yeah. You and wanted in. It was great. Yeah. Oh, so, so all right. So it's an inter it's interesting times. Interesting times. In, in, in. Indeed, interesting times. And we're out there without a strategy uh, for ISIS, of course. Um, we're arming some people in Syria, but we're not exactly sure who, and they'll turn out to be ISIS sooner or later. Uh, at, at this point, uh, I don't see what we've gained by deposing uh, Saddam Hussein or attempting to depose Bashar, Bashar Assad or deposing Muammar Gaddafi. They were all horrible people, uh, but the number of people in jail as political prisoners doesn't uh, come close to the number of people actually dead as a result of the strife that has been un unleashed by the actions of our president. No, it's the dictator, you know. The actions or in actions? Oh, you have your headset on. Okay. Actions or inactions? Yeah. Well, you know. Or is it one and the same? Um, I, th I think they're closely related. I mean, he stirs up strife and then does nothing. Community organizer, that's what they do. Rub the citizenry raw and stand back and let them go at and, it. And, and don't forget the Limbaugh Doctrine, which is at play here, which is that uh, Obama is the proximate cause for this, but he makes sure his own fingerprints aren't on it. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't agree with that anymore because... We've all known exactly what he's been doing. It's the media, the mainstream media, that's been covering for him. I think that's what and he's doing. And even but, but, now but, but, they're but, giving but, up. But, but, that, but, that's my, but that's exactly my point, yeah. that Obama initiates all of this, and then he rails against it right. as, as though he's going to be the one that's going to save you from it. I think that's why yeah. he didn't take the intelligence briefings. Yeah, uh, just, and he can say, I didn't know, I, I don't take the briefings. It must be those guys. Yeah, doing, just, right? just, yeah. Just, just like... Pick a phone line. Just, just like in places like Venezuela, the populace says what he's going to do for uh, for the people and how he's going to protect them from all of this evil, uh, regardless of the fact that his policies have mostly caused it. Yeah. So. What? No, no toilet paper on the shelves? I'm going to punish the evil profiteers. Never mind that my price control caused the problem. It's Are you good talking stick. about Venezuela again? Yeah, why not? <laughs> well, see, they've got it right, too. See, now that, now that they're in trouble, they're blaming us. That's what you do. That's what any good communist, socialist, something They've been blaming does. us from the beginning. Yeah, let's test Susan's microphone. Go I ahead. feel bad I took Susan's microphone. There, no, there are instructions. No, that's, hang on a second. I put you on this microphone. Try it again. I have instructions here. I still got nothing. This okay. is a test. Nothing? Nothing. 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 Drat. Drat. Get, get a little closer, Susan. These Hello? Doesn't work. All right, so okay. we don't have Susan. Anyway. All right, turn me off, too. I'm going to try something else. All righty. Keep screwing around. Have yeah. some fun. So uh, this, this is technical innovation yes. on the fly. We've just become a tech program. Anybody could get unplugged at any moment for any reason, uh, and, and so we'll just all keep talking in the hope. That's right. That's My name is Matt Mowers. 
<laughs> uh, that any two of us could get through at any time. Thank you yes. very much, Matt, because I can use that forever. Uh, yes, the uh, the gift that keeps on giving. Which one is she on now? Hello. Yeah, she works there. That worked. I heard that. Right, that was her. So did I. Skip's trying to figure out what. Anyway, welcome to Soundboard with Skip Murphy. <laughs> can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you from there, but not from here. That's too bad. Yeah, isn't it? Okay, so I, I got a nice echoey sound because I'm picking myself up from this microphone now, which I have to turn down. Okay. So um, uh, we uh, got about a minute before we start heading into the next segment. Um, uh, we're, uh, yeah, we're uh, having, having fun here trying to squeeze more people into the room. That's right. And so uh, we're just going to uh, please visit graniterock.com, click the donate button, and we will buy a headset. We need a bigger board again. And, and a bigger board. So. And, and and by the way, you two can participate because the phone lines are still alive. Uh, now one of them is. Skip unplugged the other one. Yeah. You can call us at 603-715-9689. You can put it back on there. Yeah. 603. Well, I want to thank Annie for letting me have her seat. <laughs> yeah, Annie. Right. It was, it was, I appreciate that. Uh, she won't be using it anytime soon. No, she won't. This is her first public appearance, I think. It in, in is. Years, it, yeah. it could have been. Should have been. Could have been. been. Might have been. You're the stand-in for Annie Custer? I cannot tap dance. I did as a child, but uh, no longer. I so can, I can, I can, I can it. shuffle. Can you prevaricate? That's the shall we? Uh, sh shall we We're start listing. a campaign We're to listing. put three empty chairs on lawns uh, around the state? There you go. Like that. That's a good plan. Speaking I like that. Try this again. <laughs> All right. Is she up dancing? Well, I don't know. We're going into the break, so uh, you can watch Annie dance on the live stream. Uh, we'll be back next segment with this whole room full of people. Excellent. And we're going to talk about some custer. stuff. I don't know what, but we're going to talk about some stuff because that's what we do. It's called Grok Talk. So we talk. We and, talk. Uh, I know. <laughs> and Kevin, Kevin's here with a sheaf of notes. So. He is, and we're going to find out what his notes are. I know we uh, we, we kind of almost sort of thought about what we were going to talk about. But we're going to let him take over, and the, we'll go wherever he wants to go. So I'm um, Steve McDonald here with Skip Murphy, Mike Rogers, Susan. Olson and Kevin Kervick, and we'll be right back in a couple of minutes. Over. When asked whether she still supports Obamacare, Senator Jean Shaheen said, Yes, I do continue to support the law. We're beginning to see some positive results. How can Senator Shaheen say we're seeing positive results when 22,000 of our neighbors have already lost their health insurance? What's worse, the Boston Globe reports the state's only health insurance provider radically reduced the number of hospitals in their network, forcing some people to drive over an hour for lab work, even when there's a hospital within a few miles of their home. When pressed about lack of access, Shaheen said, There are some hospitals that are not covered, unfortunately, and um, I, I certainly hope that's going to change. Jean Shaheen promised us we could keep our doctors and our health care coverage. Now she hopes we can get to a local hospital? Call Senator Shaheen at 603-647-7500. Tell her we need more than hope. We need leadership. Paid for by Citizens for a Strong New Hampshire. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning, the Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused and interested, riveting radio show heard live every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 on 90.7 FM WLMW, New Hampshire Family Radio, and available 24-7 live or archived at GerardAtLarge.com. Be sure to tune in. This is the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is the repository for all things conservative. School, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now at the top of our list is voter fraud. Do you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning. You're listening to Grok Talk. Grok TV.